All right, we got a little bit of a bonus lesson for you here called the proof of the quadratic formula. Now, as you've been doing the completing the square process, you might be thinking, oh, this is pretty easy. I can now do any problem uh, that they toss at me because this completing the square is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And yeah, completing the square can solve every single problem that we throw at you at this point for quadratics. Problem is, we've been giving you the easy problems and we haven't given you any problems that have an A value. Now what we're going to see here is completing the square does work every single time, but it's a little bit messy on certain types of problems. So perhaps there might be something else out there that we can come up with to help us better solve these messy problems like this one. I'm not going to completely solve this one. I'm just going to solve it to the point that you can see that you would not want to do this by yourself. Okay, so we would start by subtracting 10 from both sides. Boom, boom. And we'd get 3x squared minus 8x equals negative 10. All right, now we've got a little bit of a problem, and we did this a while back, probably on the first lesson, I think, where we have a coefficient of a here that we need to get rid of, and we said that we would factor that out. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and do that. So if I factor out a 3, I have to divide out 3 from the 3x squared. That works. But I have to divide it out by the negative 8, too. And that would leave me with negative 8 thirds x equals negative 10. All right, now before I complete the square, I'm going to move the 3 to the other side by dividing both sides by 3. So using my division property of quality. And then I've got x squared minus 8 thirds x. I'm going to leave a blank here because I'm going to have to add a number to that side. Equals negative 10 thirds. I'm going to leave a little blank there because I'm going to have to add the number to that side. So at this point, we're like saying, okay, I've got to complete the square. So I'm supposed to take negative 8 thirds and divide by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So I'm going to take negative 8 thirds, divide by 2, which is multiplying by 1 half, and then square it. So that gives me negative 8 sixths, oops, 8 sixths squared. I can reduce that. That reduces to negative 4 thirds. And then I'm going to square that. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, and 3 times 3 is 9. So 16 over 9 is the number that I add to both sides. Are you starting to see why you don't want to do this? It gets worse. So over here on this side, I've just made the perfect square of x, I squared negative 4 thirds, minus 4 thirds squared. And then I'd have to come up with a uh, like a, a common denominator for this one because I'm adding those. Common denominator for this one, that would be negative 30 ninths. And then I've got negative 30 ninths plus 16 ninths uh, is negative 14 ninths. And then I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. And you can just see this is getting uglier and uglier as we go. It's possible. I can keep on going and I can solve this one. But this is probably not the best method for solving these types of problems. Unless you want to deal with fractions all day long. And I know you guys, you guys do not want to deal with fractions. So instead of doing this, we're going to see if we, if we can come up with some kind of formula that we can use every single time that replaces the need for using the completing the square method on these types of problems. And it can be used on any problem. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the um, standard form for a quadratic. So standard form for a quadratic would be a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So that is standard form where a, b, and c are coefficients. Well, a and b are coefficients. These are all um, numbers. And then we've got the x squared and the x. So what I'm thinking here is if we can get x on one side of the equation and the a, b's, and c's on the other side of the equation, well, then we would have some kind of formula that we can just plug in the a's, the b's, and the c's. Like that previous problem we were doing was 3x squared minus 8x plus 10. So the a was 3, the b was negative 8, and the c was 10. So if I get the x's on this side and the a, b's, and c's on this side, all I have to do is plug in 3 for a, negative 8 for b, and 10 for c, and then, boom, I'm done pretty much. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and get the x's over here, the a, b's, and c's over there. All right, first thing I'm going to do, we're going to complete the square with this. It's going to get a little bit ugly. It's going to be a little scary, too. So, you know... If, if you need like a teddy bear with you or something, go ahead and hold on to that because it will get a little scary. I'm going to subtract C first. I think we can all agree that is reasonable. I'm going to subtract C from both sides. All right. So I'm left with AX squared plus BX equals negative C. I know some of you are uh, rocking back and forth grasping your your arms because there's no numbers here and that's fine the numbers are a b and c okay can't you see that that's numbers right anyways all right now we can see that we have an a value here so i'm going to factor that out so i'm going to factor out a i'm going to put the a out here ax squared divided by a is x squared bx divided by a is b over a x equals negative c. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Now what I'm going to do is divide both sides by a. I should have done this a different way. Oh, well, we're just going to do it this way because I started like this. So I'm going to divide by a. And then, here's what I've got. I've got x squared plus b over ax. I'm going to leave a blank right here because I'm going to complete the square. Equals negative c over a. I'm going to leave a blank right here because I'm going to complete the square. All right, now it's time to complete the square. The B value is B over A. So I'm going to take B over A. And I'm going to divide by 2. And we were saying earlier, the same thing as dividing by 2 is multiplying by 1 over 2. So I'm dividing by 2, and then I square it. So b over a times 1 over 2 is b over 2a. Square. All right, now I'm going to square b over 2a. And that gives me b squared over 4a squared. Because I got b times b and then 2a times 2a. All right, so that's the number that I need to add to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to add b squared over 4a squared. And on this side, I'm going to add b squared over 4a squared. Whew. Okay, 
don't worry. It looks bad. It looks real bad. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's going to get better. It's going to get better. All right. So at this point, on this side, I have to make this into a perfect square. What number did I square? I squared B over 2A. Okay. So this is going to be X plus B over 2A squared. See, that's not that bad. Okay, the other side's ugly. Okay, it is bad. All right, so over here, I got a slight problem that I need to fix. I want to combine these, but I need like terms. I need a common denominator. So I've got A and 4A squared. Okay, so what I need to do, if I got negative C over A plus B squared over 4A squared, I need to have like terms, and right now I don't have like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the common denominator is 4A squared which means I would need to multiply the bottom of this by 2a, no, 4a. So 4a times a is 4a squared. That means I need to multiply the top by 4a. So if I multiply the top by 4a and the bottom by 4a, this side right here gives me negative 4ac over 4a squared. Okay, now they have the same denominator now, so I can just add the numerators. And I'm going to say b squared and then minus 4ac squared, or 4ac. So I'm going to do b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared, because that's my common denominator. Dang it. There, that's fixed it. All right, so... It got a little bit better, it got worse, and then got better. So we took these two, made a common denominator, combined them, so that's what we have now. All right, we're getting close. We're getting real close. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Boom. Ba-boom. Taking the square root of both sides. Over here, that's the easy part. This is going to just be x plus b over 2a on this side i've got plus or minus now the square root goes with the numerator and the denominator so this is b squared minus 4ac over the square root of 4a squared Now, 4a squared is actually a perfect square because this is 2 times 2, so there's a pair of 2s, and this one's a times a, so there's a pair of a's. So 4a squared is a perfect square. So the denominator, luckily, works out. We get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root up top, I've got b squared minus 4ac. Divided by, and then this becomes 2a. All right, this isn't looking too bad. It's looking pretty good. So at this point, all I have to do is subtract b over 2a from both sides. All right. All right, we can do that, we can do that. So we get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right, we have a formula. Oh, we can reduce this a little bit more. See how these are both 2as right there? Let's, let's combine this a little bit. Since those are both two a's, I can write this as negative b plus or minus the square root 
of b squared minus 4ac over all of it over, since they're both over 2a, just put all of it over 2a. And boom, there's our formula. We've got our x on this side. We've got a, b's, and c's on this side. We have a new formula. Now, what does this mean? It means on the previous problem, if you remember, the problem was 3x squared minus 8x minus 10, that on this problem, a was 3, b was negative 8, and c was negative 10. All we have to do is anytime we see b, we plug in negative 8. So I plug in negative 8 there, negative 8 there. Anytime we see a, we would plug in 3. Anytime we see c, we plug in negative 10. And then we have our answer because we just made this formula. Nobody has ever done this before. We have just made a new formula that you can start using. You're welcome. All right, so we're gonna start using that on the next lesson.